Hello, and welcome back to the podcast. It's Ashley here, producer of the show, and I'm happy to say the 2023 season did not disappoint. It was filled with tons of valuable career intel and lots of our favorite job search tips and tricks as well. Rachel and I are excited to hit rewind today and reminisce on another year of successful podcasting. Oh, we are so ready. And if you're a super fan, you might have guessed it's the time of the year where we check our lists twice to see who's been extra nice. Not to say that any of our guests were on the naughty, naughty list, <laughs> but we only have so much time to share some of our favorite insights from this season. <laughs> I know. It's hard. It's hard to pick highlights from the season when we've had so many amazing guests from all of our different cleared employers that were able to join us. I mean, we could go on all day. All day long. But... I know this producer of this show that would probably cut some of it out and it wouldn't make it off the production floor. So folks, if you've seen a blooper reel, you know they cut out the good stuff. (laughs) Only when it gets too wild. We do have a lot of fun in here. (laughs) Agreed. But seriously, if you're new to the show, go back to the catalog and have yourself a little listening marathon. You will not regret it. You'll also get some fantastic ideas of where to get started with some of the highlights that we've pulled from the 2023 season. That sounds great. Let's kick things off. Let's start with a tip from Dwayne of Chenega Mayos. Please pick up the phone. Now, I know we are all spammed with crazy calls at all hours of the day. It happens to everybody. But if you are on the job search, or if you are actively looking for a new position and you see a number that comes across your phone that you don't know what it is, you need to pick it up. And you need to pick it up and be professional. Hello, not what's up or hey. You know, I can go on for a while about some of the different introductions I've heard from people just picking up the phone, not knowing that, hey, I'm calling you about the position you applied for. So please pick up the phone. And just a little extra tidbit, when you apply for a job, a really good option to do is if you don't, if you're not old school like me, go back to paper, create a file on your computer with the printed job descriptions of every job you've applied for. So that way, when somebody calls you from that company, you can go, oh, it's Chenega. I applied for a system administrator position. Boom, there it is. Now you can speak to it. You know, well, what did I apply for? If you don't know how, I mean, come on. It goes right back to planning. And being prepared. If you're applying for a job, keep the job description. You know, if somebody's calling you during it's eight to five, eight to six, something like that, you need to pick up the phone. You need to pick and be professional when you do it. Now, if somebody's calling you at eight o'clock at night asking about car insurance, do what you want. But, you know, during the normal business hours or just a shy after that, you need to pick up the phone and be professional because uh, uh, that might be the call that it's going to change your life literally. You heard him, folks. <laughs> Turn up the volume, pick yourself a good ringtone, because next time your phone rings, it could be life changing. And speaking of phones, I know some of you out there are probably scrolling as we speak. Stop. If you're a TikTok fan, listen up, because our resident clearance expert, Tony, has some tips concerning social media and your clearance. Tony, over to you. So we had the recent case where there's essentially a ban now on uh, individuals using government devices to access TikTok. And many people will spend hours, you know, watching the videos and scrolling through TikTok. I know a lot of people who do. And that is not in and of itself going to be a problem for most security clearance holders, but it will be a problem for some. If you're going onto the wrong pages or you're disclosing certain types of information, there's a couple of different guidelines that could be an issue for you and a lot of people don't think about it. It Just mishandling uh, sensitive information is is a big one and misuse of information technology systems is a big one. Those are two different guidelines that come up during these types of adjudications. And uh, the new rule is that an individual is not supposed to use TikTok on any government device. And the question comes up whether an individual who might be using their personal device to do their job 
uh, whether they're allowed to use TikTok on that personal device? And the answer is yes, they are allowed to, but uh, it's really frowned upon. So for an individual who's using their personal device to access TikTok, you're probably not going to get yourself into too much trouble unless you're going on certain pages that might be watched or might be um, one that could get you in trouble. And there's a lot of different groups out there that people don't think of. So this, is, this applies to TikTok. This applies to any other form of social media. Different controversial groups so things like three percenters, you'll see the Antifa movements, things like that, when there are things going on where people will go on and advocate for violence against governments or government officials. That's a problem on any form of social media. Um, but TikTok is one where I know that there's foreign ties, and we know that there's foreign ties, and that one could be more of an issue for people if you're going on there and you're posting information or you're uh, going on to certain pages. We just love having Tony on the show. You know, if you've heard any of our episodes with Tony, you know how great he is at really just explaining things that are really complicated, but making them sound so, you know, easy to understand. He breaks it down for us really well. And we were fortunate to have him on the show three times this year. So go back to that catalog when you're having that marathon. Make sure that you listen to Tony's. But uh, while tech like TikTok can potentially spell trouble, our next guest is going to share a tip about technology that can actually improve your clear job search. So let's check in with Tony from General Dynamics Mission Systems. There's technology out there that has been around for a long time, but candidates don't always take full advantage of that technology our careers website, along with you know many job boards, offer you the opportunity to set up search agents, right? And so, I would say, you know, as busy professionals, many people don't have the time to continuously look at websites. And so, technology can do that for you. You can have your job in many locations. We we allow you to set up five different searches for different locations, different titles, different types of skills that will constantly email you about a job that's posted that meets your criteria. And so I would say let technology work for you. I knew that Tony was a smart lady. And you can work smarter, not harder too, if you set up job agents. Ashley, um, rumor has it that there might be one of those on clearjobs.net. Am I right? You are right. You heard right. We do. It's really just as simple as you go on the job board, you run your search. If you decide you typed in all of those fancy keywords and got the results back that you like, you just hit the save button, add that email address, and then it's just going to run that search every 24 hours and send you jobs that meet your criteria right to your inbox every day. Definitely smarter, not harder. And it sounds like clicks that are worth clicking. But another way to find jobs is by attending. Yes, probably the most fun events of the entire season. You can dress to impress at the Clear Job Fairs. And listen, what Ashley from BDO Public Sector had to say about making the most of those job fairs. These fairs really provide an excellent networking opportunity, and it really gives an opportunity for candidates to be proactive, confident, and approachable. So A good way a job seeker can achieve this is by creating a concise and compelling elevator pitch. It allows candidates to highlight their skills and experience and gives them an opportunity to express why they're interested in joining a company. Another way to make your conversations more meaningful and memorable to potential employers is also to dedicate time to research the open positions prior to the job fair. And I can't emphasize prior enough. So if you can tell me how you're an ideal fit for the role when you show up, you showcase to me that you're interested and you've come prepared. So to me, this level of preparation makes you more memorable. Maybe it's because she's an Ashley, but I do agree with my fellow Ashley there. (laughs) I'm a little biased. (laughs) But yeah, do your research on the companies that are going to be attending. It really makes a difference. And that's why for our job fairs at clearjobs.net, we always put together a job seeker handbook. It's going to list all of the companies that are attending, some of the jobs that they're at that time looking to fill, and a little bit about each of those employers. So if you come to any of the job fairs next year, 
be sure to check out that resource. And, you know, whether it's for a job fair or maybe a job that you're applying to, you know, when you're doing that company research, you might come across different kind of benefit offerings. You know, it's not just salary. There's also the benefits component. And we heard an interesting take on something called unlimited PTO, which sounds really cool. But uh, Sebastian at Iron Eagle X, he might give you another way to think about it. So let's hear what he had to say. You talk about unlimited PTO, and that looks fantastic on paper. Absolutely. You give me unlimited PTO, and I'm like, hey, uh, all right, I'm out for the summer. I'll see you guys in two months. Like, uh, be back. But it doesn't work like that, and especially in our industry, especially the 24-7 operations. You know, if you want to take over a week uh, of paid time off, you're going to have to go and get approval. If you want to take more than that, that approval gets elevated even higher. So... You're putting yourself, you know, kind of target on your back as far as your your management, leadership, everything else. Oh, this guy, you know, he's, he's trying to take 100 days off this year. And then a major thing that, you know, some folks don't think about, but other folks think about often is the way that government contracts work and the length of them. So you talk about a three-year contract, five-year contract. At the end of that contract, it's not a guarantee that your current company is going to win that again. There's you know a, a good chance that you're going to turn over to another company. If your current company has unlimited PTO, it's just, all right, Seb, see you later. Have a good time. Whereas if you've accrued paid time off, Uh, then you get paid out for that. And a lot of contractors treat that as a severance bonus. Um, And there are other companies that even allow you to sell back paid time off throughout the year if you're not using it. So if you're one of those hard chargers or if you're on a shift, um, then you have the ability to really, you know, stack up that paid time off and then use it as a bonus for yourself. Whereas unlimited PTO, there's no amount of savings account that ever comes into play with that. That is some pretty good food for thought. And that's why I just love this podcast and all of you. And you know what they say, knowledge is power. So another aspect of a job search you should know is be in the know about any danger of employment scams. Unfortunately, employment is not without their own little scammers, those little sneaky scammers out there. So earlier this year, we had a conversation with our dear friend Kirsten um, and Chris Rides. They came to the show and they were just able to shed some light on employment scams and give us ways to avoid those stinky little scammers. Here's the story that Kirsten shared. The worst one I've seen, and it was fairly recently, Um, it was right when the pandemic was starting, and there was a bad actor that was reaching out to candidates that that were, you know, posting their resumes and showing that they were available candidates, and they were saying, congratulations, here's your offer, and here's your reload package, and here is the, the actions you need to take in order to get we're going to relocate you. That's going to be part of this agreement is you're going to get this, you know, this apartment or this housing. However, you had to take action and you had to front some money for like the apartment or the security deposit. And then you would get, and it was a very nice offer. And the, and the offer had my company at the time's name attached to it. So they would take one of our real postings, real job titles, real job descriptions, congratulate the person. It had our logo, company logo on it and everything. And it wasn't us. And people did their diligence, thank goodness. And they were reaching out to the regular recruiting address at the organization. And uh, that brought to light that this was that this was ongoing. You know, law enforcement became involved like it was an, a, a huge <laughs> scam. So that's the worst one I've seen. And it was right in the middle of, you know, a pandemic when people are getting laid off and people are, are excited that they're, they're, you know, there were people that were putting money up for this to relocate and take this, these positions. So pretty scary stuff. Great real life story there. It's scary stuff, but good to be aware of for sure. 
Now, if you want to hear more from Kirsten and Chris Rides, who was also in that episode, you're in luck because we just recently released a new episode with the two of them again. This time, Rachel and Kathleen sat down with them live in Nashville at the ISC2 Security Congress. It's always great to hear from them, so I'm sure that you'll enjoy that episode as well. But someone else that we love hearing from is our very own Bob Wheeler. And hold on, because he's got an impressive resume here. We got a little bit to get through. He's a Navy veteran, former recruiter. He's an account rep here at clearjobs.net. And he's also host of our Military Monday webinar series. You might have heard Bob earlier this year. He joined us on the podcast to share some of the military transition tips and tricks that he gathered on his webinar series. That was Military Monday. Go check it out if you haven't already. And he gave us some really great advice. So let's hear a clip from Bob. We know about marinating, right? You know, marinating means it sits for a while in the sauce. There's no way you can marinate a piece of meat in five minutes. So if you're going to marinate in your industry, you have to be around it. You have to surround yourself in it. And it slowly kind of becomes part of what you're doing. And things like podcasts, things like going to conferences, things like talking to people who are doing the business, maybe even the same thing you're doing, but doing it outside the military, you just, it just takes a long time. And you can't, you can't rush it. So you have to always be around and you have to always be willing to absorb something. And then you take it and you hold on to the good stuff. You hold on to the flavor. And eventually you're going to get thrown on that grill and hopefully you're successful. That dang Bob making us hungry and all. But he has some really fantastic pointers out there about really immersing yourself in the industry. A big part of it is, yes, the networking. And Bob really had some great suggestions for our transitioning military to really put yourself out there. Start attending those different job fairs a year out from when you're transitioning. Don't wait till it's time. Start thinking with the end in mind and give it time for that transition to really marinate Uh uh-huh, and network. And speaking of networking, our next guest, Jason of Leading Path, talks about the importance of networking and really responding to the outreach from different employers. Jason, what you got? Yeah, it's such a big deal, right, to maintain your your, your communications and, and, and your network, right? From my perspective, right, as a recruiter, I want to help every individual that I speak with, right, find the opportunity that's going to be most rewarding to them, right? Let's say I I connect with you, Kathleen, and you're looking for, for an opportunity and it doesn't work out the first time. That's okay. I want to be able to send you new opportunities as time goes on because you never know when life may take a turn, right? When, when an opportunity may grow dry or when you're looking for a new challenge. So keeping those doors open is so vital. And uh, again, I think it goes back to responding to the outreach you have, right? It, you post your resume, you obviously have an interest in, in, in a new challenge. Uh, if a recruiter reaches out, respond to that recruiter and, and, and see what they have to offer. It's maybe 15, 20 minutes, sometimes even less through an email, uh, minutes of your time just to to flesh out that opportunity and see what's available. You might be surprised. You you might connect with someone like Leading Path Consulting who offers wonderful culture, wonderful benefits, mission-focused work with a lot of flexibility, and and you may be surprised. So explore the big guys, explore the smaller guys, explore all your options, and, and really do the research to ensure you're choosing the place that's the right fit for you. That's great advice. It's always best to network before you need to. So keep those doors open and network throughout your entire career, not just in job search. Well, we're just about out of time today, but we do have one last clip queued up for you. And this one is from David at BAE Systems, and he's going to talk about having a long-term career plan. Thinking about a career as a ladder uh, just doesn't make a lot of sense anymore. Uh, and it's so much about experiences and, and getting the critical experiences to, to understand the challenges you're going to face in the future. Uh, and so a career pathway can't be viewed vertically. It has to have horizontal elements. Uh, and some of the best roles I ever took in my career were not promotions. They were lateral moves. But they moved me into a different silo of the organization, into a different mission set that I didn't understand. And it was only through that experience that I was then able to eventually move vertically up the latter, it was because of the horizontal movement, uh, not because of striving to to move vertically. And looking to gain, uh, as we talk about career pathways, I think it's important to think about that as in terms of critical experiences, Um, you know, and and talk to senior leaders about what were the critical experiences that allowed them to be successful in their roles, and then seek out those horizontal movements and vertical movements to, to 
figure out how you can have those experiences as well. David is such a fantastic way to end this episode. And I know that you're looking forward to what your career has in store. So remember, it's not always linear. I think Kathleen has even so articulately put it that it is a jungle gym when it comes to career finding. Yeah, she's right. You know, it really is like a jungle gym. Career progression, it doesn't always look like the typical ladder that you might expect or, you know, the ladder, climbing the ladder. We've always heard that. But uh, it's it's more so about what's going to provide a challenge for you in that next role. And that's why we also tell people to volunteer in the community. And Kathleen, she's a huge advocate for that. There's so much to be gained from a professional development standpoint by engaging in your professional community, putting yourself in those different situations where you're going to be challenged and learn something something new. I mean, I could go on and on. And I know Kathleen, she would too, if she were here today. But I think we'll save that for another episode. Absolutely. Now that we've got you thinking about careers and jungle gyms, and maybe even a little bit of marinating, I think it's time for us to slide into one of my famous lines. Please follow our show. And if you haven't already, do it now. Until next time. Bye. Bye.